Did you get your African sponge? Your African sponge. Feel good on your skin, family. Hey, make sure y'all join us today for Giami. Giami. Daily Toast. Family, we're giving up today. We're talking about the fascia, which is stretchy like this. Right? And actually, it kind of, kind of looks like this. Huh. All right. But we're going to talk about it. So, see you in a second. Stay tuned. Facebook is out here, so bring them out, 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 bring them out. All right, Miss Aisha, I don't got my but my uh my butter on the table, but just know that I'm shined up because I put it on already, right? So uh, we're about to get it. All right, so family, first we start with uh water. Make sure you get your glass. Grown folks, we do glasses around here. We gotta do the glass. I definitely need this water. So now, I must admit, I went over to one of my elders' houses yesterday, and he always greeted a brother with some, with some drink. And I did drink. Yes, I drank. Yeah, on fast. Yes, I did. Woo! All right, let's drink up. Drink that water. Mm. Mm. Oh, that water is so good. All right, family, 16 ounces down. And remember, two glasses is about 16 ounces. So each glass, each one of these glasses is eight ounces. <sighs> One more. Mm. Yeah, she. Uh, I see you, pineal gland opening wide. Um, I'm gonna be doing a. I'm gonna be doing a show on that, real soon. We're gonna be doing a video on that. Today we doing it. We're doing a show about fashion. Speaking of Ujima, fascia, the word is spelled F A S C I A, and it is a part of the body that most of us don't know about. But we really, really need to learn about this fascia. You know what I'm saying? Especially if we we want to reshape the body. Oh my God, it's incredible! It's incredible the stuff they're finding out, man. They're, you, do you know they still find new organs in the body? You know what I'm saying? For years, they thought fascia was useless. You know what I'm saying? It was just extra meat. The white meat. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? I'm going to bust you to the white meat. The white meat is the fascia. We're going to talk about that today. Ooh, the information. Oh. Uh. Uh. 
family, listen to me. I woke up this morning thinking about relationships and weapons of mass destruction. I can't, I, I'm, I'm, my mind is always working on this stuff, man. I always got to think, how can I get my family, how can I get my tribe, how can I get the people that I love to get up out this situation, man. I mean, it's like we're in a bad situation, and, and a lot of us don't even realize we're in a bad situation. We just think that that's the way it is, but it's not the way it is. It's the way that we have accepted. It's the way that we have allowed it, and far as relationships it's like we are in a relationship with america that's sort of like um i guess it's a not even a battered spouse just an ignored spouse you know what i'm saying it's like uh, we don't pledge our allegiance but america has never pledged its allegiance to us in any form or fashion we just supposed to fit in you know what i'm saying it's like it's like bitch get where you supposed to be I mean that's really how the 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 the, lang, the lingo and 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 how we're being treated. And I'm like, I, I don't want my children to grow up in no shit like that. I don't think any of our children deserve to grow up in a in a place where their people is just totally overlooked. And you're supposed to drop everything and and whenever she whenever he call or she call, you're supposed to drop everything and just run and and, and give service just because. They need you for a moment then, but you already know right when they don't need you, what they're going to do. Now, the, the, mass, the weapon of mass destruction, I know some of y'all thinking I'm talking about uh, nuclear missiles and stuff like that, but one, one of the weapons of mass destruction that was created and used against us Y'all, some of y'all get mad at me. It's religion. Oh God, listen, that's a weapon of mass destruction. Now, and what I mean by that is this: West Asians and Middle Asians, also known as European and Arabs, developed a certain type of religion, a certain type. A proselytizing type of religion. It wasn't even spiritual. It's just just a proselytizing, right? Which means that if you didn't agree with me, right, you had to be destroyed. You had to accept. There's one thing for everybody, and everybody that don't accept this is an enemy. This is the weapon of mass destruction that they created, right? Single-minded simpleness. You know what I'm saying? And they have spread this shit. I mean, when you look at how Islam spread, Islam, we know Islam spread by the sword. I know a lot of people are going to deny that shit, but we know Islam was spread by the sword. Either you believe or you die. You know what I'm saying? Believe or you die. You know what I'm saying? Same thing with Christianity. Believe or you die. We're going to burn your ass to the stake. You know what I'm saying? Two of the most violent religions, right? Just and and they got this proselytizing piece. Not only do they, it's the, the core, the very root of the 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 the, the belief system. Very the, come from the same area. You know what I'm saying? And I, and I can't help but to look at this weapon that's been unleashed on us, right? Miss Miss Aisha says destroys your mind and contains your power, right? And it, it, it's just. And we got to really look at this family. We got to really start looking at some of this stuff, right? Because I want you to understand, when you look at Far East Asians' beliefs, you look at Africans' beliefs, you look at Native Americans' beliefs, you look at um, um, uh, uh, Aboriginal Australians' beliefs, you look all over this world for dark people's beliefs. None of their beliefs proselytize. Do you understand what I mean? I mean, I want you to look at what, what's common. You go to, you come to uh, a, a Native American, when you came to the Native Americans, they were not trying to convert you, right? 
When you came to Africa, we were trying to, for even when we went to war with people, we would allow them to keep their religion. So now, Europeans done in, in, engulfed it in a system to a point where it's like the Holy Roman Empire. What kind of shit is that? You know what I'm saying? Have y'all heard the pledge that some of these officials got to make to the Queen of England? And this ain't no conspiracy. Look at the look look at the pledge of Canada because I understand from what I'm understanding, Canada belongs to the Queen of England. Have you seen this shit? Weapons of mass destruction. Right? It all works up in here. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes it would be just simpler for them to kill us. I honestly believe. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I did. Because the shit they putting us through in the head, it's crazy. But hey, that ain't even what I was supposed to be talking about today. Um, let me finish my water. I'm sorry, I don't mean, I'm, I hate to hold y'all up on, on this, but I mean, I, you know, when I'm sitting up late, you know, I'm trying to do, go to sleep or whatever, just shit come on my mind. Because I'm not just trying to compete, I'm trying to win, god damn it. So, this is Tart Cherry, very mature, very mature. Tart Cherry. Let's see how let's see how it sounds. Oh baby. Oh, oh look, oh, look, you, look you, do you see the oh man. Uh but this is mature, so all the all the sweetness. Well almost. Because one of these cherries blew up on me. So those of you that's ordering cherry, know that as soon as you get them, you have to keep them cool. Y'all see y'all hear it foaming up? You have to keep it cool, family. Now, tart cherry, we'll talk about tart cherry if we didn't talk about it already, but one of the things they help you with is sleep. Um, full of antioxidants, I think. Um, good for a muscle recovery for when you're working out. You know what I'm saying? I just added a little bit of the ambrosia to it so that it's fermented now. So now, more of the stuff is available to your body. I really can't see, but you can see the color right here. So, first, give an honor to the creator by whatever name you choose to call the creator. I want to uh, uplift that being. I want to call that energy, even though we already know it's all around us. Um, we want to reflect that energy. We want that energy to flow through us. We want it to heal us. We want it to... Um, to work with us, help us move through the maze of life, right? We call on that energy, and we say, Shay. Next, we go to our personal ancestors. And you know this morning is always, always about us remembering our personal ancestors, family. So we toast our personal ancestors. We, put, we toast our loved ones. We toast those who did for us when we couldn't do for ourselves. We toast those people who helped form the personalities that we have today. We toast those and we remember those that checked us when we need to be checked. We toast those, right? We toast them and we lift them up. We call on um, a personal ancestor. So I, I go down my family line. If y'all got any, feel free to post them up. Miles Brown, Ms. Ann, Robert the Texan, and Davis, Herman Brown, Senior, Rosalie, Tilly, Georgia, William, Walter, Christopher, and Gasson, Alina, Uncle Chris, Geneva Brown, Cleveland Brown, Ivara Brown, um, my Gina, Margaret Ellis, Cecil Ellis, uh, Jamon Jones, um, Montague Pittman Air, No More X, Mama Malika, uh, John Falar, man. Uh, wait, I gotta do a special one for John. John was. John was my first, I ain't going to say first little brother, but John was my, uh, John was my brother. Um, I met him in college because when he started college, he was 16 years old. And uh, as soon as I met him, I liked him. And uh, we hung tight for years. And, you know, he moved to, uh, Atlanta to finish school because of the craziness we was involved with at Ohio State, so his parents got him up out of here, and then he moved to Philadelphia, and 
like for the reunions, he would come back down here. And one day, I was just talking with him because I went to Africa and I'm like, yo, man, John, you got to go to Africa with me. He said, dude, I'm going to go to Africa with you. I said, I want you to meet somebody, right? Because, you know, I'm talking I'm talking serious about this girl. He said, yeah, I want to go over there. I'm, I'm, I'm coming. You know, and I'm used to people saying what they're going to do, right? I mean, we all got those people in our lives that tell you they're going to do something and then all of a sudden they disappear. So I called John. I said, yo, John, I'm getting my ticket together to go to Ghana. He calls me and he fed, he sends the money for the trip. You know what I'm saying? He sends the money for the trip. But I'm going to Africa with you, right? You know what I'm saying? Like I said, I, I'm, I'm, I'm not used. And that, that right there, solidified. I mean, it was stuff before that that solidified it. But that solidified it because he was like, dude, I'm not letting you go over there by yourself. You know what I'm saying? I'm coming over there with you. I'm coming over there staying with you. Right? So when we get to Ghana, <laughs> wait, hold on. I mean, this is an ancestral story, so bear with me, family. When we get to Ghana, right? He. He, he he only brought a duffel bag. So we get over to Ghana and, and he finds out that we stand at this nice beach house, you know what I'm saying? Be and and all this. So, you know, I'm like, he said, Yo man, uh, I gotta go buy some clothes. I said, man, what you mean you gotta buy some clothes? You got the big ass duffel bag. So he dumped the duffel bag down and he got flashlights and, and shit to start fires and I mean, just like survival gear and shit. And I'm like, John, what are you doing, man? What are you doing? He said, brother, you told me it was coming to Africa. I wanted to be prepared. <laughs> so, to make a long story short, he thought that, you know what I'm saying? I mean, because like the, the programming that's on us, man, he didn't even think that there were cities. He was shocked when he got there. You know what I'm saying? We had a real good time, but I want to lift up that ancestor, John Fillard. I will forever remember you. Uh, that's Cleveland's godfather, right? Nomo is a wisdom's godfather, but, you know, we said no more X already. So we toast those ancestors, man, because sometimes we need to tell them stories and we need to laugh. Make sure your kids know the stories. Because I Cle Cleveland definitely gonna know this story about his godfather, right? So we but we got to tell the stories, man. Because that feeds our ancestors, man. That gives them the ability to come and help us. That that calls them to us. It's like a beacon for them, right? It's like a beacon for them. And we're not shining the light so that we can attract our ancestors so that we can get the help that we need. You know what I'm saying? We always go to battle with our ancestors with us. As a matter of fact, Marcus Garvey told us to call him and he will bring millions of Africans to our assistance. And we ain't even doing it. You know what I'm saying? We don't become so spooked out dealing with all this shit that these people done put on us that we done forgot. Um, Miss Aisha says she wanted to send out um, a, a, a salute to her grandfather, Smakes, um, Frank Smith, and Mother Bertha, my step great grandmother. See more. Hold on. See, she was typing. Of course, we already got Jamon Jones. She put down her first love. All right. Um, he was my little brother first. Um, Brother Marcus and Naeem. Naeem. Okay, let's see. So, hey, we toast these ancestors. We lift them up. We let them, we let them roam around in our heart because it makes us feel good when we tired. When you tired, man, think about some of the stuff your ancestors went through, man. Come on, now. Hey, we lift them up and we say, I say, we toast the day. The day is Ujima. And today is the day that the package is supposed to arrive for Ms. Vern Loves, right? I shipped some ambrosia and I've been, I've been wondering, I've been praying, I've been meditating that the bottle stay intact till they get there. You know what I'm saying? Because, you know, ambrosia is, you know, it's, it's alive, it's volatile. They trying to get up out that bottle. They want to serve you, right? So today is the day of Ujima. Collective work and responsibility. Um, the day, uh, far as 
um, the meiotic principles is righteousness as far as the M7 which is the principal system I use for the school the day is a day of respect um, the hermetic law is the law of vibration um, if you was born on Ujima um, your male name is Kwaku the female name is Akua alright so we toast this moment because in this moment is our power we toast and we say I say now we toast our children, our children's children unto infinity. It's very important we remember our children. It's very important that we lift our children up, right? You know what I'm saying? Sometimes, you know, we go a little bit too far with the discipline. Well, let me speak for me. Sometimes I go a little bit too far with the discipline and the shit that comes out of my mouth. So I have to often apologize to my children. You know what I'm saying? We need to be able to, to show love and we need to treat them as 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 who they are they are returning ancestors family we are generational people i'm telling you i got a book i got a book that's formulating in my mind right now it's formulating in my mind right now listen we're generational people it don't stop fam we come back so we need to make sure that we lead the world better than we left it so that when we come back we're coming back to some fly shit it, it, the time is up. We 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 forgot. You know what I'm saying? We forgot. But now we starting to remember. You know what I'm saying? So now we gonna start. We gonna start building as if we know. We got to. So we lift up that glass for our children, our children's children, on to infinity. Last but not least, I toast each and every last one of you. Those that are watching now. Those of you that's getting up now. You know the answer is gonna run with you today, right? We told, I toast you, all of your issues and all that, you know what I'm saying? Whatever you got, put it on your cup, right? You know what I'm saying? Those of you that's watching later, ancestors going to catch up with you when you catch up with them. All right? But I thank every last one of y'all for tuning in. We toast, and we're going to drink this tart cherry. Now, remember, it's called tart cherry. That's tart. Ah, I feel it up here. I'm this is what I'm talking about. Damn. Woo. Mm. Time for my detox. Y'all see, I cleaned it up just a little bit, right? Cleaned it up just a little bit. I did get all that stuff out the jar, so I'll be able to make some of these. This is not going to be as fizzy as everything else because most of the herbs in here are designed to stop stop the uh, the growth of stuff. So you know they don't play. Oh, oh, see the ambrosia strong boy. It's sitting up in here with all these herbs. It's still, it's still kicking it just a little bit. I ain't gonna do a lot of this. I smell like turmeric. Smell that cinnamon. The thyme. All right, Facebook, I took up enough of y'all time. I love y'all, all right? I'll take it easy. Um, YouTube, it's on us now. So, peace out, Facebook. All right, family, so I've been doing some reading. Um, I'll be researching for the show just for y'all. Um, and we're going to do a more in-depth show on, on breathing. We're going to do some more stuff on breathing. We got a lot of stuff we got to cover, right? Because I want to make sure that you up on um, the latest. You know what I'm saying? But the retention of breath is, is some serious, serious stuff that we really going to look into. Especially those that's on 
the Goose Saba Challenge and those that want to take the 13, what is it? No, 21 week warrior training. My fault. All right. So, now, today, we are going to be talking about the fascia. And I know a lot of y'all haven't heard of it because I didn't hear about it either. And a lot of people out there don't know about the fascia, right? So, let's, let's, go, let's go and see what they say. Um, this is an article by Brooke Thomas, Yoga, Mobility and Recover, Recovery Corrective Exercise. You may be noticing the word fascia, also known as connective tissue. It's not actually connective tissue, but that's what some people call it. It's a hot topic right now in all body-related fields. But before we get to why fascia matters to athlete, here's a brief primer about why it's getting so much attention these days. Now listen to this family, right? Because it's going to be some eye-opening information. First, many think of fascia as a glorified body stocking. So now, fascia is totally connected. And all the way through, it's sort of like a, a, a wetsuit that you have on. Like fascia is, is so form-fitted that if they was to take everything out and just stand it up, even with your face, the fascia would stand just like you. The fascia basically shapes and um, Let me read what they got to say, then I get you don't mind. First, many think of fascia as a glorified body stock and a seamless piece of tissue that surround rats you just underneath the skin. While this is true of the superficial fascia, it is important to understand it is a richly multidimensional tissue that forms your internal soft tissue architecture. From the superficial body stock and fascia, it dives deep and forms the pods called fascicles that actually create your muscular musculature like a honeycomb from the inside out. Imagine what it looks like when you bite into a wedge of orange and then look at those individually wrapped pods of juice. Right? When you bite into the orange, you can look in and you see those little pads of juice. Um, also, the white skin. Think about it. You got that white skin on the outside of the fruit. Right? We're, we're like that too. Fascia also connects muscles to bone. Tendons are considered part of the fascial system, right? And bone to bone, ligaments are also considered a part of the fascial system. Slings your organ structure, structures, cushions your vertebrae. Yep, yeah, your discs are considered a part of this system too. And wraps your bones. So imagine for a moment. You could remove every part of you that is not fascia. You would have a perfect 3D model of exactly what you look like. Not just in recognizable ways like your posture or facial features, but also the position of your liver, the zigzag, your the zigzag your clavicle takes from the break you had as a kid, and how your colon wraps. To say it it's everywhere is far from overstating things. Fascia is everywhere. For years, now this is me, for years they thought it was useless. When they used to do um, um, aut autopsies, they would just tear it off and throw it away, right? For years, they did not understand what this fascia was, but let's get into it. In fact, it turns out fascia is everywhere is one of the reasons it was overlooked for so long. Until recently, it was viewed as a packing peanuts of soft tissue, the extra. Therefore, in dissections for study and for research, most of it was cleanly scraped away and thrown in a bucket so the cadavers could be um, tidily made to resemble the anatomical text from which people were studying. Poor, misunderstood, and underrated fascia. Fortunately, research is catching up to what turns out to be the, a remarkable communicative tissue, um, um, communicative sensory, and proactive. No, pro, pro. Listen, let me get it. Pro, proprioceptive tissue. Pro, 
proprioceptive. I don't know what that word means, but it sounds good. Let's say it again. Pro proprioceptive tissue. What fashion researchers are discovering is pretty amazing, not just for fashion nerds like myself and eventually you, because when you start hearing some of the uses of this stuff, but for anyone who wants to put their body to good, healthy use, like, for example, all of us at breaking muscles, right? So without further ado, here is some of the newly emerging information about fascia and how you can use it to maximize not just your athletic performance, but also your plain old ability to feel good in your body. Fluid system. While it's difficult for us to understand how a support structure could be a fluid structure, because we're not exactly making high-rise buildings out of jello, it's true. Juicy fascia is happy fascia. The best analogy I can give is of a sponge. When a sponge dries out, it becomes brittle and hard. It can easily be broken with only a little force because of how crispy it has become. However, when the sponge is wet and well hydrated, it gets springy and resilient. You can crush it into a ball and bounce it back. But um, you can wring it out and twist it but it is difficult to break. Once we understand that we're like that on the inside, keeping our fascia hydrated takes on more importance. Our mobility, integrity, and resilience are determined in a large part by how well hydrated our fascia is. In fact, what we can call, or what we call stretching a muscle is actually the fibers of, of the connective tissue, the collagen, gliding along one another on the mucus Y proteins called glyco, uh oh, here we go, glycosamin, glycosamino, oh, glycos aminoglycans. There you go, glycos aminoglycans, or known as GAGs, depending on their chemistry, can glue layers together when water is absent, or allow them to skate and slide on one another when hydrated. This is one of the reasons most injuries are fascial. If we get dried out, we are more brittle and are much, um, greater, much greater risk for erosion, a tear, or a rupture. So drink more raw water, my friend. Well, yes. And no, staying hydrated via drinking continues to be important. But if you have dehydrated fascia, it's more likely, it's more like you have these little nicks in your hoses, microbasculos. And so, all the water you drink can actually reach the dehydrated tissue and get urinated away, never having reached the crispy tissue. To be able to get the fluid to all of your important nooks and crannies, you need to first get better irrigated via the micro vacuoles. And to do that, you got to get to work on your soft tissue to untangle those gluey bits. Woo! Seeing a body worker who specializes in any form of myofascial work, rolfing, or other forms of structural integration and art tend to be phased. Um, will do the trick, but you can also work on this at home with an array of self-care tools for working with your own fascia. As pointed out in last month's post, I don't like the harder tools as they are less effective at actually unkinking your hoses. So, you know, so that soft tissue, you know, you massage yourself, you know what I'm saying? Pay for a deep, deep massage because realize they're not just massaging the muscles, the massaging and working the kinks out of that fascia. And in doing that, oh, family, listen to me. Listen to me. So we used to think that a lot of attention and stuff was kept in, in the muscles, but it's not really the muscles. It's the fascia, right? It's holding a lot of emotional baggage and it's making it hard for the body to move in a way that it needs to move. Right? Because we're just now discovering this stuff. 
Variation matters. Movement also gets the hydration out to the tissue as well, but the movement needs to be varied. This means variation not just of the movements themselves, but also variation of the tempo. Not only does movement constantly in the same ways and in the same planes, but you at a further risk for joint erosion. But you are also dehydrating fascia in a particular pattern, thus setting you up for that brittle tissue that injures that injuries love so much. So let's go on and get off of that. It's all connected. Listen, let's say for example that you are in your kitchen and your leg is on is in your bathroom, is in your bedroom. This is an example of not being connected. You may also notice it's an example of a potential plot line for Dexter. Something has gone horribly wrong in the scenario. Okay, so we were not dropped on our heads as children, and we get it that our parts aren't detachable, but the problem comes when we think of them as attachable because of the way we all learn and study anatomy, whether the extent of your studying was singing, the hip bones connected to the song in preschool or something more extensive we conceive of human bodies as attached by magical soft tissue versions of tape in anatomy we speak we speak and describe all muscles as having an origin and an insertion so for example the gastrocinemus muscle our most superficial calf muscle originates on the lateral and medial con condyles of the femur thigh bone and inserts on the calcaneus heel bone by the Achilles tendon. It makes it sound like it's taped or stapled to be um, stapled to be attached at its origin and insertion points. Like it's this separate thing that gets stuck onto other separate things. A more clear and true to human anatomy description would be that the gastro the gra the gastrocnemus becomes the Achilles, Achilles tendon by weaving more densely until muscles become tendons, and then become the calcaneus bone by weaving more densely until the tendons become bone. I am not just trying to belabor the anatomy semantics. This is important because it gives us a handier understanding of how we just plain can't have something happen to one part of your body and not have it affect every other part of your body, albeit in varying degrees of intensity. Often in the fashion geek world, we'll use the example of wearing a tightly knit sweater. If you tug on one end of the sweater, you see the tug travel along the distance to the other end of the sweater. For athletes, this brings the dreaded domino effect into a clear perspective. Many of you have experienced the domino effect without having the name for it. First, your necks get injured in a minor whiplash in that teeny tiny no big deal car accident that you had when you were 16 years old, but your 16 year old, your, but you're 16 years old, so no biggie. You ignore it and it gets better. But once you enter college, suddenly you have this nagging shoulder pain with all extra typing and sitting, with all the extra typing and sitting you're doing. As the years go by, you start to think of yourself as this tight shoulder person. And sometimes you have a pinching pain when you lift your arm. More years go by and you are now not only a tight shoulder person, but you also suffer from occasional lower back spasms. You have to develop a plantar fasciitis, which you assume must be because you're running. Everyone says running is bad for you. I could go on and it's just one quick sketch of one type of domino effect on the infinite possibilities, but you get the idea. This fascia is totally connected. So family, us thinking about the hand not being able to affect the entire body, this we are, this is totally, it's incredible. I mean, when you really start looking into this whole fascial piece, it's incredible.
So it's like now he, they talking about this domino effect, and we almost done. Just bear with me, right? But the piece is, when something happens, it affects the whole body. And I'm just trying to get you to get that. I want you to understand that. I want you to be empowered by this fact, right? So now that you got a different look of your body and what you could do with this stuff, right? Hold on. His springiness wants to help you out. Now, here we go. Y'all ready? What do you get when you add juiciness to connectedness? Springiness. When your tissues retain or regains its natural spring, the rebound effects, effect of the fascia allows you to use less muscle power and therefore fatigue less rapidly. Want to jump higher, run faster, throw farther? You need to pay attention to nourishing the elastic quality of your fascia. For example, when you run with healthy fascia, the force you transmit into the ground gets returned to you through the whole tensional network of the fascia. It's like you have a little built-in trampoline acting, um, uh, trampoline action going on. So once you've done the work to rehydrate your tissues, you want to embrace bouncy movements. Some good examples of how you can best play with this are running, jumping rope, um, box jumps, kettlebells, all martial art forms also rely on the inner spring. That's why they're so cool, right? This inner, this inner energy that we used to think we just generated from our hip. It ain't just about the hip. It's about this whole springiness that we have, right? This can increase the, the distance we can run. This can increase the heights in which we could jump. This can increase the power of a blow, right? Because we understand that all this tissue is connected. They said Bruce Lee used to throw. They asked Bruce Lee, where does, um, uh, 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 let's say, a right hook start for him? He says, um, if I'm throwing a right hook, it all starts in my left toe. Now, people can understand this now because this connective tissue the springiness in the left foot pushes up through the calf, all the way through that fascia, all the way up to the hip, to where you're able to twist, and it goes into your waist, and all that energy throws, boom. So if you, if you mimic my movement, you plant your left foot down, you see that it does start in your left toe. You're pulling that energy all the way through your body and it snaps. As a matter of fact, if you listen to Bruce Lee talk about it, he talk about when he hit something, it's not like a solid thud. It's more like a whap, more like a snap, more like a spring. You know what I'm saying? Oh, family, listen, this right here, this information right here, like I said, it'll make you run faster, jump higher, right? A lot of y'all storing a lot of pain in your fascial tissue, and you need to be hydrated. And we're going to get to the hydration. Oh, we're going to get into the hydration, right? Oh. Five, it's the largest and richest sensory organ of the body. Now, I want y'all to know that this all this shit is new. All this information is new. They didn't even know this. But now I want you to hear what they're saying. It is the largest and richest sensory organ of the body. What? Y'all know what a sensory organ You know what a sensory organ is, right? Okay. Now, this little tidbit of recent fascia research was a shocker. It turns out that fascia is one of our richest sensory organs with between. It's an organ. I did not tell you they just that they discover more organs now. Now, fascia is an organ. We, saw, we talked about the skin being the largest organ. But fascia might be, you might got more fascia than skin. So, skin might be number two now. And the liver number three. Now, this little tidbit of recent fascia research was a shocker. It turns out that fascia is one of our richest sensory organs with between six to ten times higher quantity of sensory nerve receptors than the muscles. In fact, it is possible 
fashion may be equal or superior to the retina, which has far been considered the richest human sensory organ. So they don't know which one got the most. The retina in your eyes that make it I want you to and I want you to understand what I'm saying here. The retina in your eyes that make it possible for you to see or the fascia inside you. This this is how sensitive this thing is. This thing collects sensory information like the retina in your eye. This kind of makes it possible for you to understand how somebody that's totally in tune with themselves could feel you walking up on them when their eyes are closed. Could block your punch when their eyes are closed. In fact, it's possible facial may be equal or superior to the retina, which has so far been considered the richest human sensory organ. This make your fascia a system of proprioception, i.e., we just that word proprioception, i.e., of knowing where your body is in space, but also of grateful full body orchestration of movement. So this is the thing to help you identify where you are, when you are, but it helps your body move all together with all these sensory all this sensory information that we got access to that a lot of times we ignore therefore well hydrated and supple fashion is crucial to maintaining your natural setting for alignment and function and maintaining those natural settings will keep small problems from snowballing into larger ones keep injuries from becoming chronic issues that flare in and out of life and keep you mobile and functional for longer through life, as in moving well, but also the perks that some of which are avoiding nasty surgeries and joint replacements. Listen, family. You have to go on and start looking into natural movements. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, walking through the woods. You know what I'm saying? Um, getting rid of, I mean, I, I know a lot of people laugh at me, right? I got, I got barefooted, I got barefooted running shoes. I know that sounds crazy, but I got little sandals that I run in. I got uh, moccasins that I walk in that's very flat, has a very thin heel. Um, you don't even have a heel, has a very thin sole, right? Because I'm trying to get my body used to moving in this natural way. I'm trying to learn to use the springiness in my body. You know what I'm saying? In a more natural way. Not just in running, but in my basic gait. Right? Um, we have to start getting back in tune with our body. And this new information gives us, gives us an opportunity to really start trying to take better care of our body. Now you understand why I keep on talking about hydrate the body, family. Right? So not only do we got to worry about all the organs getting in water. Not only do we got to worry about the skin getting in water. We got to worry about the fashion in our body, getting the water that it needs. So we definitely got to stay hydrated, right? Because now we know that if we're not hydrated, then we won't be able to move. We won't be able to be bouncy. We won't be able, our connective tissue start drying out and makes it possible for us to go through a, a, a domino effect uh, of things because it's totally connected. Family. Family. We got to do this work. All right. So, yo, this is Brother Hotel. I'm saying, hey, check out. Check out that fashion, man. You got a whole new organ in your body called fascia. And you need to take care of it. I'm about to take care of mine right now. I'm going to take some of this. I'm going to do some oil letting. Um, get in here and watch the dishes even though I ain't eat. Um, but I'm telling y'all, peace. And have a great day. Peace. Thank you for watching the video. I want you to subscribe. Click the bird right there, the fiery bird. And I also have a special video just for you right there. And for those that want more information about Jamie Journey, go to our site, 
should be right about there. Peace.